Hi, this is John from Revit for Interior Designers. Today, I wanted to address a very common question. How to adjust rendering quality on the cloud? Let's take a look. So let's get started. Here is a sample perspective I set up in Revit. I'd like to create a nice looking rendering from this original image. If I go to render button here under the view tab, I can produce a rendering inside of Revit. I typically choose the absolute poorest quality for the settings here, draft, because I want these images to be generated as quickly as possible, because I may be doing many of these in, in, and reviewing those in progress renderings to confirm that the objects in my scene are appropriate. I haven't forgotten any materials. I like where the lighting is, for example. So hit the render button and I wait approximately 30 seconds for the rendering to get produced. The idea is that you produce many of these and you test them for quality. Make sure your, your objects are in the right place. You got the right material load. Forth. Here's an error message that's the material missing, and I'll show you how to resolve that in a second. But because you're doing so many of these, you want this, this process to go very fast. And once I'm happy with this process, I'll take advantage of the Autodesk 360 Cloud. Here I can return to the model or go back to that preview rendering. As you can see, it's very pixelated along these edges here where the shadows are landing on top of the work surface. Now that I've got the test images ready, and I can confirm that the images contain the appropriate models, materials, so on and so forth, then what I'll do is I'll create a nicer quality image, but I'll take advantage of the Autodesk 360 cloud service. The error message we saw earlier can be handled here under File, Options, Rendering. And using this plus sign here, you can add a directory here using this little directory menu here and point to the folders containing your materials, those custom materials that you've downloaded off the internet and that you'd like to use in your project. Not the Revit materials that you get from the Revit library, but anything custom that you've downloaded and brought into your project for the sake of a rendering. Point to those folders and you will not get an error message when rendering are created, whether it be on your computer or in the cloud. So here's the render in, in cloud. What it does is it uploads your project to the Autodesk 360 rendering service. The cloud there takes a copy of your project and produces renderings. And on that site, you can take those renderings and make them of better quality. So if I click the Render and Cloud button here, I can follow these steps, hit Continue, and here I'll choose, again, a very low quality rendering. I will choose the, the absolute smallest image size because I want them to be produced quickly. And I'll notice here that this is gonna cost me zero credits. The idea is this, Autodesk 360 offers a pool of credits. Currently there's 16 credits available. Uh, for students that may change in the future. You have a pool of credits. Every rendering you produce requires credits. So if I were to grab uh, this menu here and simply choose a maximum number of credits, it's going to cost me eight credits to produce this rendering. In the past, 16 credits have been the max. So once those credits are depleted, you can no longer produce any renderings. But when the renderings are completed, the credits will be returned to you. So they'll get recycled. You can use them again for more projects. But again, I want to make sure that I can see a draft of the rendering before I go to a high quality. So I'll use small and I'll use render here and that'll begin to send the project to the cloud. I'm going to cancel this. There's the warning that the material is missing locally and we resolved that earlier. I'm going to cancel this and I'll take a look at renders that are already produced in the cloud. You must be logged into your A360 account here. You can visit students 
www.autodesk.com and register for a free account. You can also access software for a free period of three years uh, to basically learn AutoCAD, Revit, what have you, and other products offered by Autodesk. So to visit renderings I've already sent to the cloud, I simply use the render in gallery button here. So if I choose that button, it'll launch this website here, where I'll have a tray of images for the current project I'm working on. Some of these images I've, I've completed and I've made better renderings. So for example, this, I can see here under the info button, that shows that this image is 300 by 2400, and this is measured in pixels, image size. When it comes to the quality of rendering, everything is about image size in terms of pixels. It's really important to remember. This is the first draft of the rendering of this project. And again, I can see that it is pixelated along these edges. It's a low quality draft, but it was produced pretty, fairly quickly. There's a re-render button here that allows me to improve the quality of this image without requiring Revit. Notice I'm no longer in Revit, I'm simply visiting a website. So remotely from your smartphone, laptop, tablet, what have you, you can actually improve the quality of these drafts on the cloud. So to begin this process, it requires a little math. And the formula is simple. Printed size times resolution results in the quality of your image. Resolution is basically measured in pixels per inch or dots per inch. Once you know how big the printed size is going to be, a physical hard copy in your hand, how big does that image want to be? And you, then you multiply that by the resolution desired. So 72 dots per inch equals a poor quality. It will suffice for digital use, uh, viewing them on uh, images on your computer, using them, them on websites, uh, in a PDF file, what have you. If you're viewing them on your computer monitor, 72 dots per inch typically works just fine. But when you actually want to print the image and see a higher quality image at a larger size, you typically want anywhere between 200 at the bottom end for a, a better quality image to 300 for the best possible image. And then simply, it's, it's a math project. Let's say I want an eight by 10 image at 300 dots per inch. That results in eight times 300 or 2400 pixels and 10 times 300, which is 3000 pixels. That's the information that is key to producing quality renderings on the cloud or actually any software program. So here on the Autodesk cloud, I'll use the re-render button here. And simply here under the width and height under custom, I will enter the desired pixel dimensions I want at the appropriate DPI. And in this case, 2400 by 3000. So 3000 here by a height of 2400, and no, notice here that you have to unbind these two together, unlink them, to be able to change one without the other. Here, you simply choose the final quality here. I'm gonna leave all the other aspects of this the same, and you see it'll take seven credits in my account to produce this image. It'll be, it'll be done in under 10 minutes. On your computer, it might take a great deal longer. Again, it's based on the quality of your, your process or your hardware and what have you. That will might take minutes. That might take hours, depending on uh, what it is that you're using at home or the office. Render button here will send this uh, to get re-rendered. While that happens, you'll see that it becomes an hour, uh, little hourglass here, or a timer, rather. And then there you see the size of the image is being produced. Here's a sample of the low quality image I rendered on the Autodesk Cloud. And here's an example of the high quality image I rendered in the Autodesk Cloud. And you notice automatically that one is actually bigger than the other, and one actually looks better than the other. 
in this image here, if I were to zoom in using Photoshop, you can see that there are lots of pixels here that are very visible. In this image, this was produced at 72, 72 dots per inch. So for every inch of image, there's 72 pixels that result in a very poor file size. This image here is much, much better. If I were to use the magnifying glass and zoom in, you can see along these edges that it's very hard to pick up where the pixels are. I'd have to zoom in much, much closer before I can begin to see that there's actually pixels there. In one inch of this image, you've got 300 pixels. They're much smaller. Therefore, the quality is much better. The resolution is improved between one image and the other. Here on the Autodesk Cloud, you'll notice this is the higher quality image here. And there under info, you can see that it was actually rendered at 3000 by 2400. This is a better file size, better quality. I can use this button here to download this image. And that's exactly what I have open currently in Photoshop here. If we take a look at the poorer quality image, we will go to info, or rather image, image size. You can take a look here. This image is 500 by 338 pixels, which is matching the information on the website. And you'll notice here that it's actually rendered at 72 dots per inch. So 6.9 times 72 equals 500 pixels. 4.6 times 72 equals 338 pixels. This button here needs to be unchecked. The one called resample should be unchecked, whereas these guys are linked together. This number should never change. That's how many pixels you captured when you produced your rendering at the low quality end of the spectrum. You can improve an image by making it smaller. So if this image, for example, was three inches by two inches, then you have, you're at a 166 pixel resolution or DPI, which is, I consider, uh, a poor quality. If I simply move this up to 200 DPI, this is a two and a half by 1.6 inch picture, which may look fairly decent, but it'll also be pretty small might not be what you're after. Let me cancel this. Here's our image that was much higher. Again, this was a, intended to be an eight by 10 at 300 dots per inch. And those are the pixel numbers I actually entered into the Autodesk 360 website. Did I get those results? Let's take a look. Image, image size. Here, you'll notice that I, again, this three samples unchecked. By default, these images come in here. The size of pixels is at the top, 3,000 by 2,400. That's exactly what the Autodesk website confirms when you go to info. But when you open this file for the first time, you'll see this. This will default to 72 because most rendering programs, when you produce a rendering, produce it at 72 dots per inch. You typically enter the dimension size here, but they'll default to 72 dots per inch resolution. But you're getting the same image. It's just much bigger. So if you do the math, 41 times 72, in fact, is 3,000, and 33 times 72 is 2,400 pixels. So this is the right image size, but it's not the right printed size. So to fix that, you simply go into the resolution here, and you move this to the resolution you intended. Let's say 300, and note that 10 times 300 is, in fact, 3,000, and 8 times 300 is, in fact, 2,400 pixels. This is the image size you intended. So this is the correct file size, but it wasn't the correct printed file size. If this goes to print, you may want to do some adjustments here to make sure the actual size of the image is accurate. So this is going to print at a 300 dots per inch quality, which is really a high quality for this image. So this will fix the actual printed size image and the Autodesk 360 website allows you to improve quality using the re-render button. So hopefully 
this has helped and we'll see you next time. Thank you.